Welcome to Corrective Consciousness, episode 131, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I'm your host, Vise the Bold, and this is Pyro Jack Frost. And uh, Admiral Stompy. <laughs> <laughs> Commandant Stompy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Admiral's as, as high as you could go uh, before General, right? Uh, Isn't that how it goes? So, so in, in grinding the MTG Arena ladder, I've gotten all the way up to Diamond Rank, which is like as hard as high as you can get before you hit the absolute, le- like the, the top, their Mythic, which is their version of Legend. Um, so, like, getting up there. <laughs> oh, uh, you certainly you are cool? mythical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, once again, uh, Lotus is out sick. Uh, he will be back uh, next week, hopefully. Uh, though I, uh, I still have a lingering cough for for like the past month or so. So, um, who knows how long sick? this? What's that? Did you get him sick? Uh, yes, I gave you him a man, blanket, you. a blanket with all bad, of my bad, DNA bad. on it. <laughs> wow, that's disgusting. <laughs> that. Yep. I, I think I need to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, man. Just go ahead. But anyway, um, uh, this is uh, our first uh, corrective, uh, normal corrective, since a couple weeks ago. Uh, but we have a brand new topic to talk about. And uh, this is, uh, our, our focus this time around is series that we want to get into but haven't had a chance. So I wanted to start this off. I, I, there, are, there are a couple timely ones that um, I really uh, wanted to talk about. And the first being Ace Combat. Uh, have either of you played this hmm. series? I have not. Uh, I, I also have not, and I guess I feel the same way. Like, now that you remind me of it, I never would have picked that, but I've heard so many people <laughs> talk about it that I kind of want to, and there's a new one coming out. Exactly. So that, that that's mm. actually what made me think about this series, uh, or this topic, because um, Ace Combat 7 is coming out on uh, on PCs and consoles. Um, well, on, on PS4 and Xbox One, uh, I, I, I suppose. And um, this has always been a series that fascinated me, because uh, I like dogfight simulators and things like that, but I, I don't like realistic ones. I like fun ones, you know, like arcade-style stuff, so this is the closest thing that we have to uh, you know, like Afterburner and, and, and classic stuff like that, and I, I really love that stuff back in the day, and I, I like um, things like Star Fox as well, so uh, this is going to be the, the closest thing that we have to that. Yeah, and I, I just want to clarify, ha- too, in case anyone doesn't know, which I'm pretty sure they do, dogfighting is planes shooting at each other <laughs> yes it, it is like a distinctly it's american like colloquialism pokemon. yeah yeah i'm just wondering <laughs> if someone who didn't know what that was this whole conversation like wow <laughs> <laughs> dog fighting simulator oh i like the arcade version of those. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um uh ace combat has always been a series that's fascinated me um we've gotten all of the games in the series um, I believe all the major ones uh, in this series, but um, the early ones ha- were kind of bastardized. Like, the first two uh, games, I think, had their entire story ripped out of them. Hmm. Um, the, the Part of what makes these games good is that they have a uh, mythology and a uh, pretty intricate storyline with the warring factions in it, and um, it, it has a very anime-style um, you know, drama going on in the background of it. And that, that's part of the appeal. Um, so there have been some fan restoration uh, restorations of the original games uh, on the PlayStation. Uh, and uh, I think ever since the fourth or fifth game, uh, the games have been pretty much on the up and up. So that's good. Um, I know uh, starting with the fifth game, which was on PS2, and the sixth game, which was uh, on, on 360... Uh, they've had special um, flight controllers to go with them, which is pretty neat. Um, so they've always really fascinated me because I, I like weird um, peripherals and things like that. And I also am interested in the story. So um, I've, I've wanted to explore this. Uh, I think there is a um, a, a specific uh, flight yoke that uh, works really... Uh, that, that they're touting with this game, you could you could use any uh, flight controller that you want that that is in major use. But I think they they specifically licensed um, a, a specific one in order to work the best with this game, which is pretty neat uh, with the seventh game. So I'm 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 I might just like skip the early games because it's you know it's so far out at this point. Maybe I'll just it'll be a good entry point. I'm sure it will be. 
because it's the first game in a long time. It's like been hmm. ten years or so since I mean, the last one came. It out. will have been made with the fact that it it'll be it'll, it will be made in mind that it'll be coming out in a system where nobody will where they can't assume any of the installed user base will have played any of the previous games. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to this game. Uh, apparently, it also has uh, has um, some VR support. Maybe uh, is, is one thing I think I read. So that that might be really cool too. Uh, I know I think it has HOTUS support, or, or, or you know, um, like where where you can move your head, um, you know, and and it it'll move like your head is inside the the cockpit, which is kind of neat. Hmm. So um, I think there's some cool stuff going on with it, but it's always been a series that I've been, you know, wanting to get into, but just really haven't made the dive. Any anybody else want to make a, a suggestion here? Yeah, I mean, like talking about uh, bringing up something we mentioned during uh, reactive. I mean, I've played a few of the Tales games, but like, I'm I'm really big into RPGs, and the, that series is one that I I'd really wanted to get back into. Let's say. I've only really played three, but I know there's like ten Tales games. Um, I, that part partially is is because it's less that I haven't had a chance; it's more I haven't had the time. Mm -hmm. Like I guess you could say that plus the uh, the uh, what is it, Legend of Heroes games, mm -hmm. because they're just so long. So like I, I love RPGs; <laughs> they're my favorite genre. I would say they've been my favorite genre for a really long time, but since the games take like 100 hours to beat especially when you're a little bit of a completionist like I am it's more of an issue of time more than chance I mean if I had all the time in the world I probably would play all the Tales games and all the Legend of Heroes games mm -hmm. so like I actually have played a couple of Legend of Heroes games and I, I haven't played the rest of the ones released in America for largely the same reason but I, I think Pyro you and I know we have a mutual friend who's like really into the series and also yeah. like speaks fluent Japanese and went to and you know imported um, the latest the latest one Tales of Cold Steel three mm -hmm. um, and he keeps like messaging me on Facebook like oh my god I cannot believe until <laughs> I cannot believe this game you know I cannot wait until you get to this part and I was like oh my god I have to get through all of Cold Steel two <laughs> exactly and wait for them to translate three before I ever get to play this game yeah whenever yeah. he whenever he talks to me about it he's like oh like I hope you get back into it because in this one game, like, something really cool happens. I'm like, yeah, but there's, like, 300-hour games I have to beat yeah. before I get oh. to that point. Yeah, and, and, and also that Cold Steel is, like, the, you know, the, the 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 conclusion of a saga that started with Trails in the Sky, you know, proceeded through three <laughs> games of Trails in the Sky, through two games of a series that we never even got in America. Yeah, and yeah I, guess I was you actually going to gonna mention that. <laughs> I guess you have to digest some other way or, you know, just ask our, our, our friend to tell us what happened and why we're supposed to care about these people, you know, and then also play all the Cold Steel games. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a I lot. think I think there are fan translations for um, uh, Tales of Azure and Tales of Zero. I think those are those are the two we didn't get, right? That, that sounds correct. That that sounds like the closest um, like American transliteration of the names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it it, it was um, we we got the first three by some miracle. Um, mm -hmm. the, the the first one was was very plausible, but then the 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 the, the fact that we have two and three at all. Uh, of, of trails in the sky is like a miracle um three like nobody ever expected that one to come so um i'm glad that we have them i just haven't put in the time and uh, I'm, I'm a little leery to do that before you know the other two that we missed are, are fan translated because i, I definitely want to play those before i go into cold steel but then, uh, then I'm getting myself in the weeds like I always do. So, yes. Um, so I, I've been trying to get myself out of doing that because I, mean, I, I think... What's that? You're committing yourself to like roughly 250 hours of video yeah. gaming like at a, min at a minimum, which is saying a lot, especially as someone who, who like claims to want to be able to spend a lot of time with a significant other, as, I, as, as all of us do. You know? sure, <laughs> these, are, sure. these are like largely mutually exclusive things, especially JRPGs. There are a lot of games that I play that my wife really enjoys sort of like sitting and watching... You know, Persona Five was one of them, um, sure. but but most JRPGs do not fall into that category at all. I have never. Because they're I, they, <laughs> boring. Like really, they're, when you, they're when not you really spectator think about games. It, yes, they're boring because more than half the game are just spent in battle, doing the same thing you do every other battle. <laughs> Exactly. The, yeah. the, the best case scenario for me is that my wife starts like bothering me that she doesn't like the way that I'm playing the game and tells me to play it a different way, and that's her source of amusement is that I get really frustrated by that. Um, and I but think the, like, <laughs> one of the benefits of at least Persona Five is because 
like even though that's the same thing where you spend a lot of time in battle like, even the battles like look good in mm-hmm. a way that you could have the fun and while like the legend of heroes games the battle system is pretty cool like the the, the tales the trails games let's say are is a really cool battle system it's still like not as it's still very mechanical more so than like for looks Yes, yeah. it. I mean, th- it doesn't help that they all look about one console generation older than right. the one they came out on. It's a Falcom game. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I knew what I was getting into, you know, but 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 that doesn't mean that I'd foist it upon other people for fifty hours <laughs> each. But uh, each, yeah, yeah. Each. yeah. It, so, um, are you seriously thinking about getting into the Tales of series? Like, um, do you think maybe this Vesperia port will be a good jumping on point for you? Well, I played that when it came out on Xbox. That was actually, I think, my first oh, okay. Xbox the 360 game. Um, and I really, I really, really liked it. I played also um, Destiny 2, uh, which, oh, not Destiny 2, oh, yeah. the American Destiny 2, which is actually Eternia. Um, I played that one, and I played the Super Nintendo one. I emulated uh, Fantasia for Super Nintendo. Okay. I think those are really the only ones I've played, although I'm I can guarantee I'm forgetting one or two, but um, I I don't know if I'm going to go back into them because like they are JRPGs and I really need to make sure that I, I part of me with my gaming is I'm trying to like limit the series that I play because if I can get into if I get into a series like I'm going to want to play all of them and especially with a JRPG like the time commitment of that is enormous and like we've talked about in Recon a lot of the Tales games the battle system is the same oh I played Abyss mm-hmm. too but I never beat it um, that's a fan favorite too yeah isn't it? yeah but yeah. like they're good and I think that if I had the time I'd probably play, play them but I don't really see that I'd get into them in my current situation <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, how about you, Old Man Stompy? Uh, what's a, p- a pick for a series for you? So, I know that the last time that I was on a regular episode of this podcast, I, I went into detail about how I had a hell of a time trying to like pick my my the right point to enter the Resident Evil series. Um, mm. And we discussed it quite a bit then, so I, I kind of don't want to use that again now. Um, but I, I just do kind of want to like tap on that because eventually I'll talk about how I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll be comparing notes with Lotus Prince because he's like exhaustively deep documented the differences between all the, you know, the, the, the different versions of Resident Evil 1 and 2. And he'll have to make a new version of his Resident Evil 2 video because they're making a remake of that. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm sure we'll revisit this topic again in the near future when I finally like get over myself and make my decision. Um, <laughs> the, the other one would be like, like any uh, Western theme. Real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Go ahead. Um, I hear uh, there's a lot of good buzz on the Resident Evil 2 remake right now. Um, so um, I think that is a very good jump on point because um, the the original Resident Evil 2 was actually where the majority of its fan base jumped on to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, well well its original um, fan base I, I should say um, all that was the most popular game in the series until four um, uh, you know was it was a big hit. So uh, I think um, that is a really good jumping on point you know with with the the, the new version of 2 coming out uh, and so, it's going to be an action oriented so it'll be pretty fun so that that's probably true um but so like f- at least for me if i'm playing like a whole bunch of games in an older series like it's partially for historical purposes you know sure. so like so I like um you know for, for example like for tomb raider i would say never play the original tomb raider game there's almost no reason <laughs> to do that it's like barely playable as it is I, I i have a copy of it i put it in my ps1 i played like the first level and i i, I never touched it again um, Le- Legends. I, I would actually argue that Legend would be a, a good uh, game to play because sure. it's, it's a it's a really nice remake of the original yeah. game. But that, that's that's what I mean. That yeah. game has a remake that you should you sh- and you should never play the original because there's right. basically no entertainment value to playing the original or or, or uh, except for like reminding yourself that the original PS1 controller didn't have an analog stick and that's part <laughs> of the reason why the game controls the way it did, and it's an early 3D game from a yeah. console that didn't have an analog stick. So it it's like playing um, Mega Man Legends at this point is is, yep. is like, oh god. Well, <laughs> same, 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 same console, right? Like, same yeah, reason. Exactly. Um, so, same issue. But, but Resident Evil 2, like, like, I can imagine a scenario where that game might actually be fun to play in its original state. I don't think it has that same, um, like, like, albatross around its neck, where, where there's, like, no reason to go back to it. 
Um, so it might still... And, and the remake will probably be different enough. Like, I remember the, the first Resident Evil remake, just from listening to Lotus Prince's documentary on it, like, sounded different enough that there's... it's it's It would be interesting to play both of them. Um, so probably the same would be true for two. Uh, so it really is only adding another game to the laundry list well, that I'm making for myself when I decide to get into the series. Uh, two I, is going to play, like... Uh, the, the remake of two is going to play like four did, which mm-hmm. is completely different than the original uh, games in the series did. So there is there is some value in playing the original part two because it's that tank controly like... Um, adventure game kind of um, mm-hmm. gameplay. This this is going to be, you know, uh, a horde shooter um, it, it, with with adventure game elements. Right. You know what I mean? So so it, it, it's completely different. Yeah, completely so different. so then then it's reasonable to play both games, uh, I think. Sure, sure. Um, like, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, like, the games themselves are not super long like a Tales game, and you can, you can play, like, you, you, over the course of a week, you know, even if I had, like, an hour or two hours a day, like, to dedicate to video games, which is still sometimes a lot, um, like, I could make a lot of progress in one of these games, and if, I, like, let's say, for example, I didn't, but I made my New Year's resolution in 2019 to, like, beat, to, like, play Resident Evil games, then by 2020, there's a pretty good chance that, that even if I just used my free time between other things I wanted to do, that I could have at least made it through, like, Resident Evil's 1 through 7. You know, that's not, yeah. that's not an unreasonable thing in a year to play 7, seven like, 15 to 20 hour games at, a mo- at most. Um, and and you you kind of you kind of hit your your pace with the old tank control games. Mm-hmm. Um, they all kind of have their own uh, similar beats. Uh, right. They all add features as time goes on, of course. But um, I, I did that actually um, a few years ago, maybe about like seven years ago at this point. I played um, like remake zero and then two and three in rapid succession. I had already beaten Code Veronica a long time ago. That was the first one I had beaten, and. Um, uh, it didn't take me long to play them in succession, um, mm-hmm. so so that 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 is very feasible. Um, and and you know with the improvements that have happened with four and five, uh, and five, th- those are quick action games. So you'll 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 beat those in under twenty hours. Sure. So so you'll you'll get to it. So I got pretty close. I actually loaded up my PS Vita memory card that has the original Resident Evil uh, downloaded onto it. So that's about as close as I've come in a very long time to actually playing a Resident Evil game. Like it's everything, but actually, like click on the little icon on my Vita home screen and, st- and push the start button. <laughs> well, good for you in that. Yeah, respect. I mean, I've wanted to get into Resident Evil too. I I started with um, Code Veronica. That's the one I played. But it's kind of like I'm not a big horror fan, and not not even survival horror. So it's more I'd want to play that, and let's say Silent Hill more because I know that they're good games and i've heard they're like good things about them more so than because i actually want to play them Mm -hmm. but i did like the resident evil the code veronica game when i played it but Mm -hmm. it's not like i I don't find it my jam like like you were saying uh old man zombie it's more for the historical purpose of hey this is a game that's a lot of people enjoy let me Mm -hmm. see what it's about and if I don't enjoy it, that's fine, but I'd want to check it out, let's say. Right. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you, you were segueing into another series. Uh, so I, I, I want this wound up taking longer than I expected, so let maybe everybody else should have a turn before I circle back around again. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I I have long wanted to get into the Assassin's Creed series. Mm, that oh, was yeah. one of the ones I was going to mention. Right. Yeah, so um, I, I feel like I owe this series something because... Uh, uh, you know, I was a foundational fan in that I was I was a big fan of the uh, Prince of Persia uh, Sands of Time trilogy. Mm-hmm. So, um, and Assassin's Creed is very much a spiritual successor to uh, those games, and I, um, I I absolutely love those games. And um, I didn't play the first Assassin's Creed because it had some bad press, and it, and and it's still the worst game in the series by a, by a long shot. And also the reason why I haven't gotten into the series right. is, is is it's the start of the story, their overarching story that they basically dropped dropped off on. In like the third or um, fourth game. Yeah, yeah. So they don't they don't even pay attention to their original narrative. Um, they had a, like a dual narrative where they, you know, they were doing a future story as well as a, uh, um, you know, something in the past. Uh, so. I'm, I'm leaning... I never used to really do this. I used to, you know, trudge through the shit games uh, in order to get to the good ones. But I, I'm I'm starting to think, you know what, uh, and, and for historical purposes, maybe I'll just watch a, a, a story video online and, and get it over with. Because 
Um, the original Assassin's Creed uh, is is very bare bones in terms of like content, and uh, it's very repetitive, um, from what I understand. So I'm more than willing to because like uh, a lot of a lot of the fans of the series came on during Assassin's Creed 2, which is one of the best games in the series. So um, yeah, I started I think with I'll, one also. Mm-hmm. Oh okay. Did you? Uh, yeah, and it left a bad taste in my mouth a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. I played it for a few hours, and I was enjoying it, but then it got, like, really, really repetitive, and it left a bad taste in my mouth. And then I think there was one year when, like, Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood were on discount, and I'm like, oh, I'll, I heard those were good, so I'll try it. And I had I was having more fun with it, but it was at a bad time because there were other games coming out that mm-hmm. I wanted to play more, so I didn't play that. And I heard that um, Origins was really good, Mm-hmm. Odyssey wasn't as good, but it's still okay. So it's like I wanted to try them. Um, but I think it's more I'm okay hearing about them. And like mm-hmm. I think I'd much rather watch someone play it than play it myself. So. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning towards playing the, the 2 trilogy um, and then probably skipping 3, just like I skipped 1 because most people don't like 3 either. And then uh, going on to Rogue because that's a that's another fan favorite. So um, that, that's what I was thinking about doing. So uh, I I kind of I, I guess I guess this is common for all of us. So like I I, I own the original Assassin's Creed. It's one of the uh, it's one of the first games I bought on Steam. It's actually the game that I think introduced me to the concept of the Steam sale because I, I know I bought it when I was like super cheap. And mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, I, I own less than ten games in the Steam on Steam at the time. Like I just was not interested in the service. Except for the fact that it gave me a reason to play like Half Life Two and SA- and now Assassin's Creed, um, so like that's how long I've had it. But I I never played it because it didn't sound fun uh, after mm-hmm. the fact. I I just you know I bought it on impulse because it was on sale, and then I read about it later, and I just never really felt compelled to play it over anything else I was playing. Mm-hmm. And I, then I act then I actually did like play and platinum Assassin's Creed Two. It's a really easy uh, platinum on PSN, um, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure why like. You know, I, I've told all these stories about how I, like, can't get out of my own way and make a decision on, like, what the correct entry point is for a series and how, like, oftentimes I feel, like, paralyzed if I can't play everything in order, same as, like, Lotus Prince. Sure, um, like, and I'm that, was, that way, too. That was the whole thing about, yeah, that was the whole thing about uh, Resident Evil is that I'm always starting from the first one and there's, like, 20 different versions of it and all this other crap. Um, but, like, why Assassin's Creed? Like, why did I suddenly decide, like, oh, I'll just play Assassin's Creed 2 and I don't give a crap about Assassin's Creed 1 anymore? When it's, like, very decisively a story-driven game and it has this, like, huge overarching narrative that's been progressing through all the games of the series. But, nope, it was... <laughs> turns out it's totally fine to play video games out of order if one of them is really fun, because mostly games are to be played for entertainment value. Um, sure. And uh, I have never played any... Uh, so, my um, my mom actually wanted me to play Assassin's Creed 3, because sometimes... She, it's, it's like, she can't play games as much as he, she used to anymore, but sometimes she wants to watch them, and she has, like... Sure. You know, re- she has, like, requests that she puts in. So, <laughs> we, 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 we bought... She saw, like, the, the trailer for Assassin's Creed 3 in a movie theater, because, you know, it was pushed pretty hard. Uh, it had that whole, like, American Revolution narrative. So, we, we did... We did buy and play a little bit of that, but not very far into it, and that's basically my entire exposure to the series. Gotcha, so gotcha. Would be like they make a new one every year, right? So like the the, the every longer year it takes you, to, yeah, yeah. yeah, the longer it takes you to get into it, the further behind you fall. It makes me kind of anxious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, there's there's a lot of apocrypha in that series too. Mm-hmm. There's like if you want to play every other every every game, you can you can play the Chronicles games and all that stuff too. Right. So um, you know, I I. I I think I'm gonna be kind to myself for once and, and just <laughs> and not play you know, it. drop the baggage. <laughs> drop drop the baggage. Um, I I I I recently got sick of it because I was just like, you know what? Like, I just want to play something. Like, mm-hmm. I, I I was giving my, myself such a hard time in in playing the Yakuza series um, because like I own all the games and haven't played any of them. Uh, that's another <laughs> series that I have all of and I haven't played any of them. Yep. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Like. I'm I'm just gonna start with zero because it's a really popular one and it seems like a good entry point and apparently it is. Um, you're you're not missing much by playing it as a prequel. Mm-hmm. Um, you you could play it as the first entry of the series and it's a good starting point as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, so I, I've actually played the first two of that and I think I I, I, I got Lotus Brand started on it. I think I lended him my copies of the first two games, at, at least mm-hmm. the second one. Um, and so so you know it's partially my fault that that. He, used to take up a lot a big chunk of all the pre the, the old format episodes of corrective consciousness talking about yakuza um but anyway they yeah i, I stopped it too I, I have three and i play a little bit of it but then um yakuza zero is actually one of the games coming coming to me soon in the humble monthly bundle 
Uh, oh, cool. So since it's a prequel, I decided like, well, I don't really need to play like three through six to play a prequel. Mm. You know, this is a good and like all the other games, I would probably have them on console. So this one I'll have on the PC. So I'll just play it on PC. Yeah, it's a series yes. that I wanted to get into too because again, I heard it was good and that one is I think would be more my jam. Like I'd actually probably mm. really enjoy it, but I think it is the fear of there being now like seven Yakuza <laughs> games that I'm like Ugh, I don't I don't know if I'm gonna want to play all of them. Well, well, Zero is a good jumping on point uh, right now as well because the the um, Kiwami um, remakes of one and two are mm-hmm. out now, and they have all the niceties of Zero, mm-hmm. so um, uh, of of the modern games in the series. So it it it's it's not like if you're gonna skip over the original two PS2 games, which is very reasonable at this point. Um, you know, it, this is a, this is a good way to play them. Zero, one, one Kiwami, uh, Kiwami one, and Kiwami two. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do, um, and they're they're coming out with the re-releases of three, four, and five, um, v- pretty soon, probably this year. Uh, so I'm 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 looking forward to that. Okay. But uh, I I started playing Zero and finally got over myself, and uh, it was it's it's been fun. But I I got distracted with uh with Spider Man, which I've made mm. some major headway, and I'm like I'm probably about forty percent of the way through uh, Spider-Man right. and I'm, I'm having a good time just doing the side missions because it's just so much fun to move See, around in that, that game. That's a good franchise to get into because it probably <laughs> will eventually be a franchise but right now there's only one game and it's Spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, it, it's not Amazing Spider-Man or Spectacular Spider-Man. It's just um, uh-huh. Spider-Man. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> or Peter Parker <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, yeah, you, you, uh, you guys should uh, name another series here too. I another series that like I feel like a lot of the series that I'm going to think about are ones that I might have meant to not play but because I heard they were so good <laughs> I like want to try them out some more like the like I the game that I was going to mention is Metal Gear Solid and it's a game that I actually did play for a little bit because I played 2 or was it 3 uh, I played 2 and I got to the part with Raiden but <laughs> and you threw your controller on the ground. But that, that, that's like, that's like half the game. No, no, <laughs> like I know. <laughs> but I got, I got halfway through, and then I, I don't know what I did. But there's a there's a, a part of the game where you're supposed to get like a gun, an outfit, and something else so you can sneak into the base. And I somehow managed to not find one of the items. But when you go across a bridge, it collapses, and I couldn't figure out how to get back. So I'm like, okay, well, I can't progress anymore. There probably was a way, but I just, at the time, didn't figure it out. And then 3, I started playing. And I wanted to do, like, the no-kill run my first time through, which is a really bad choice. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. And it kind of made me not want to play it. But um, I think I I kind of would enjoy the, the stupid story. Uh, I watched a friend beat four, and I'm like, I think I might enjoy this if I just played it, not as a oh, stealth game. Oh, four is the dumbest game I in know. the series. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the, but but it's stupid sometimes in an awesome way. Like yeah, no, it's it, it's dumb in only a way that a really smart person can be dumb. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> be, because it has so much self awareness of of how silly it is. It's, that it's, it, it's it the goes only game that gets like excited that you don't have to use a memory card in PlayStations anymore. Like and the only game that gets excited if you happen to be using the new DualShock with the rumble controls. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. It it just has a lot of dumb dumb humor in it too. Like it, it it's also like the most it has the most infantile sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, like potty humor in the entire series, <laughs> well, and the so, series has always had potty humor in it, but it's it's especially egregious. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm recalling like the scene from Metal Gear Solid Two, where like Raiden is like like wakes up naked on the booth, and like every direction that you look in, there's always something like <laughs> trivial in front of his genitals that like yes. you w- you wouldn't expect to be there from the camera angle, but if you turn it like at the last second, like something pops up. <laughs> he, he he's always covering it with his hand, no matter what you're doing, uh, and no matter like even if you're like doing like cartwheels and stuff, it's right. really funny. <laughs> but but like also like when he's on the booth, if you move, like there's like a soda can that you can't see except when you try to move the camera in a certain angle that like pops up. It's really <laughs> funny how much the, how much the game like pokes fun at you for like trying to look at Raiden's penis. <laughs> yeah yeah, it's very funny. Um, uh, I would say that uh the the main um. If you if you were to start from Metal Gear Solid One, uh, I, I would I would skip past um, Metal Gear One and Two, uh, there, and and most people have, um, you know, just be just to keep your interest going. Mm-hmm. You can come back and play those uh, eventually later. I, but oh, well, go I ahead. Think one of that's them was not, yeah. free, so because I have PS Plus, I think one of them was free or something. 
I don't remember which one, so I, I would probably play that one just because I have it for free more so, so than. I was just well, going to say, yeah, Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear, yeah. Metal Gear 1 and 2 for the MSX are free with uh, the HD collection. Mm. Um, that uh, it, It's part of 3 on that HD collection. Mm -hmm. So, it's uh, it's part of three the, the subsistence re-release the one that came out for PS2 originally. That, that's that's all I was gonna say. Like the, the they're they're not actually that bad. Like they're actually still imminently playable today. Uh, they and are part of the reason why is that like the stealth mechanics aren't nearly as intrusive as they are in the Metal Gear Solid games, which you, you wouldn't really expect because like the the core gameplay loop is still kind of the same. Um, like the the enemies, they only have like, exact line-of-sight stealth, so it's actually really easy to stay out of their way for mm. most of the, the, the early parts of the game until it gets really... until it's really hard anyway. Like, yeah. until you expect and they, they also hard. they also added uh, niceties to those versions. Like, um, mm -hmm. in the original versions of the games, uh, it didn't save your... Um, the the frequencies you needed to remember your codec frequencies. Mm -hmm. um, and in the, in, in the uh, versions that are included with Metal Gear Solid 3... Uh, they they added like quick, uh, quick pick buttons uh, for the people that you talk to on your radio. Uh, so uh, the the worst parts of those games have been um, rooted out. Mm -hmm. So th it, they are good to play, but uh, I think it gets really good with uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, One. So I mean, if if you want to keep your interest, uh, I, I I still recommend getting onto that, that with the original point and then moving forward. And in, until you get to uh, when you, once once you beat four, you want to play Peace Walker um, mm -hmm. bef before you play uh, five, uh, because that 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 game is uh, a big part of five, for sure. So I, I don't know how you want to do it, but um, it, it's a good. It, it, I ran through uh, a few of those entries uh, a little while ago, and uh, I I really enjoyed it. I love those games so. <laughs> Uh, I like 4 a lot more than a lot of the fan base does, um, and I played it a lot later, so uh, I, I, I can tell why they don't like it, <laughs> but uh, I also appreciate it for what it is, and I think it was really quite good. Okay, mm -hmm. any any other uh, series for the good of the order? Uh, so, like, I kind of want to, like, almost cast an entire genre, like, in this light. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a... so. It's um specifically like Western style RPGs, which mm, okay. there's, like a, there's a lot Gate, of the like, that. like yeah specifically like anything in the Baldur's Gate style engine, which I always like I watch and then I get excited about them and like yep. I, they really look like games that I would enjoy, um and then and then I I, I buy them, at, like even moving into like like Bethesda games like Fallout and uh, Oblivion, I think the only uh, the only games in any in, in the only Western style RPG I've ever played all the way through or like even for more than like an hour would be uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on the okay. original Xbox. But everything else, I, like I, I own, usually on Steam. I think Baldur's Gate down twice because I have the enhanced edition <laughs> now. Sure. Um, and I, I know that they're fantastic games, and like everybody that I know who plays RPGs, especially people who will play a lot of PC games, like swear up and down that they're like like transcendent experiences if you really get into it. Um, but I have not like crossed that threshold. I always get like killed by a bear five minutes into the game, which is a thing. Like, Valor's like Gate <laughs> one was notorious for that one mm. thing. Yeah, so, I, I I I tried that with the Stalker series too because I wanted to play the Stalker games and then move into Metro. Um, and like the Stalker Gate, uh, the the first mission is balls hard, and I, <laughs> I, I I I I like it's before you have any good weapons, and that's probably why it's hard. Uh, you don't have any weapons or, or, like, armor or anything. So you just die really easily. So, like, and you don't know how to play the game yet. Oh, so uh, one, of my, one of my coworkers reminded me, because he had run into the same thing in Red Dead Redemption 2. Not that it's that much of a Western RPG. Um, but, but like, specific, it's a Western. Specifically, yeah, well, it's, it's Western <laughs> developed. It's a Western. It has RPG <laughs> elements. So it's, like, pretty close. <laughs> from from sure. my standards, it's good enough. Close enough. Um, yeah. So there, there's, like, something that's achieved almost, like, mimetic status in, in the PC RPG community, which is, like, the welcome bear. It's, like, a, <laughs> like a, a specifically, like, a bear type enemy, which, which you always think that you can take on, but is designed to, to like, to, like, make you abjectly terrified of going anywhere as a level one, like, early playable character. It's like the so. Death Claw in uh, Fallout 3. Uh, so, Death yeah, that's that's Fallout their 3. that's their welcome bear. So there's one yeah. in there's one in Baldur's Gate, and it killed me every time I tried to play the game. 
Um, there's one in World of Warcraft, I think, and now there's one in Red Dead Redemption 2, and uh, I'm sure there are other examples of similar things that I've forgotten, but our, our, our listeners are happy to, are, would, you know, we'd really appreciate it if they'd, like, you know, provide examples yeah. in the comments. But yeah, I, I've always wanted to play Planescape Torment as well. I was going uh, to say yes. that that was one of the only CRPGs that I actually beat, and it mm. is really good, and I would say, like, if you're going to play one, that would be a good one to play because the story is great. There's no penalty for dying because it's actually part of the story. Mm -hmm. um, and the dialogue it doesn't have good. any baggage either. It, it's like a standalone game, right? Right. It's it's a, like a different campaign location, you could say, in Dungeons & Dragons, but they did really well with making it its own like, standalone type of world. Um it's yeah. Forgotten Realms, right? Isn't it's not Forgotten it Realms. It's Planescape. It, that's it. Oh, Planescape. Baldur's gotcha. Gate takes place in Forgotten Realms. Um, okay. But like, I I agree with those games in a way because I actually kickstarted Pillars of Eternity and the Tides of Numenera because like I really used to like those RP those types of games, but they take a they like most RPGs they take a long time and like you're talking about they're they're hard in the sense of the progression is a lot different. While in RPGs like you level up, you get more powerful. Mm -hmm. In Western RPGs like that, you level up, you you put your stats into where they belong, and if you make a poor mistake, you can't change that that choice, and you have to live with it. Mm -hmm. I I recommend the um the Mass Effect and Dragon Age games uh, mm -hmm. because they they have an um enough of the trappings of um, Knights of the Old Republic, but also have a lot of action elements as well. Right. And in fact, um, you know, as time goes on, Mass Effect becomes more actiony. Dragon Dragon Age still still keeps to its roots, but um, at least you know you don't have a lot of the old uh, design decisions uh, weighing those down. So, like, if you want to get into them and then you know go backwards, um, I know I know you probably won't do that, but well, actually, um, I did I did play quite a lot of the original Dragon's Age. I had forgotten about okay. it until you reminded me. The only reason I stopped was because I learned very, the hard way that Dragon Age, the first Dragon Age, is one of the last games that doesn't have an autosave. Mm. Oh <laughs> yeah, and it was at a time when I expected basically every game on the 360 to have an autosave. Uh, and it I, I got in over my head on on some optional boss fight and I died and I wound up having to redo a lot of content and I just like I put the game away and, and didn't, I don't didn't blame get back you. to it. Yeah, so but One bit. that's that's like lar <laughs> I mean I understand that that's a design flaw of the game, but it's like largely my own fault for not being at least partially diligent in, in playing an RPG and not saving not saving my game manually myself. Um, I mean, I, I ran to, into that same issue when I started playing uh, Half Life again, mm -hmm. like the original Half Life. Like, you, you need to autosave in all those old games. Right. So, um, no, I, I totally get it because you get used to modern game decisions like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you can't blame you for that. Um, the the only other thing I was going to quickly mention before we move on is uh, I, I I'm probably after after I play Spider Man and Yakuza Zero I, I'm going to move on to playing uh, the new God of War game I'm not going to mm. play any of the old ones the old um, ones are good I played I know they are I didn't play the portable ones but I played one two and three and they were all really good yeah I know I, I may go back to them but I want to play the new one first mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's a good jumping on point from what I understand there's not a lot of baggage in the actual story that's told in that game so from what I understand and it was one of the best games of last year and yeah, I don't want to miss I out it on it really for too long mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to bite the bullet and go to that and then play the originals after that because they're they're good enough on, uh, they're modern enough on their own um, that you know it, it going backwards from them is not so bad and they have their own style of play uh, that's different enough from the new one right. uh, so um, Devil May Cry series is going to be like that for me as well uh, then I'm going to play the fifth one and not play the old ones and then go back if I need to mm -hmm. it's uh, I, I'm, I'm just sick of this um, I'm sick of the baggage anymore I'm just going to I'm, I'm going to play the new game along with everybody else I mean a, a lot of the time like going all the way through the series requires you to play a couple of games that are bad and not intended to be played, like in the construct of the series, like Devil May Cry Two. There's like yeah. literal, literally no reason to play that game except right. to say that you played all the Devil May Cry games. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. The, and and you don't need to play DMC even though it's a good game on its own. Yeah. Um. But anyway, um, I I did want to move on here because we we got plenty of other things to do. Oh yeah, we have uh, a lot of episode. we have a lot of fan feedback this week. I was surprised. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, quickly also uh, mention a couple uh, housekeeping items. I, I forgot to weigh myself today, so that's that's my bad. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do that next week. Prom I promise. I, I'm acknowledging it. Um, I, I don't want to fall off the wagon, and I've done a couple of lifestyle choices. I've stopped eating french fries. Um, I've been getting um, you started side onion, salads. You started onion rings instead. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I've been getting side salads okay. uh, it, as a replacement uh, for all of these things. And uh, whenever I get a restaurant uh, hamburger, I'm only going to eat half of it. Um, they those have typically a lot of calories, and yes, um, you can get by with just eating half, and you'll be fine. <laughs> this was like so, a, a pretty big deal for me too, just like because I, yeah. I, no, I, I, I work in the middle of Manhattan. So it's it's very tempting a lot of the time to eat out in one of the like myriad places that you can go, and it's it's actually like most lunch restaurants, especially like like Chipotle style, you know that those meals have like close to two thousand calories by themselves, especially if you get like guacamole in your on your on your your burrito or like sure. some other sauce on it that tends to be like pretty pretty fat intensive, you know, and you basically you can you can order one lunch and it's actually like two lunches. You can yep. put the other one in, in the free in the freezer for tomorrow. Yeah, no, I'm 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 right there with you. Um, and I'm just sick of being fat, so like I'm I'm finally doing something about it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it it was one thing to just be annoyed by it, but now I'm just like, ugh, like, uh, like just don't want to. Right, but like, just like this the, anymore. you know, the balance a lot of time, like the, the you know the, some of the easiest mean free paths, or if you can eat the same times a day as you were eating previously and still feel full, just like get rid of shed a lot of the excess calories. You mm -hmm. know, so like a lot of the time eating half of a. Uh, you know, half of a burrito or whatever, you, half of a burger, whatever you're eating for lunch, will still get you full, just not excessively full. Exactly. Um, and so I, I've been making those cho choices. So I think I've been pretty stable, and that, that's been a good thing since the holidays. But uh, I'm I'm gonna make good progress in the other direction. I I, I want to get I, I want to get to 200 eventually here. So um, uh, I I really want to get there. So uh, that would be a very good thing. Uh, but uh, and I also wanted to mention I have to apologize for this during Magfest. Um, I, I had s said that during a previous recording that we were going to try to uh, do another beat 'em up recording. I did not. Um, we were not able to organize ourselves to do that, mostly on my end, uh, because I, I just didn't want to bore uh, my significant other uh, here and 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 kind of sexile her uh, <laughs> in a in a word uh, to to um you know relegate us to uh, both a recording of two podcasts and a recording of a, a video game session it's not fair to her while we're all, you know doing doing this kind of stuff um so um she was a captive part of that audience so um we will move on to uh playing knights of the round uh so hopefully sometime soon uh but that is the game that i i, I want to play and and three of us will be playing it hopefully uh, so uh, we'll, we'll have a, another entry in our Capcom beat em up series, but uh, I, I did want to acknowledge the fact that we, we just didn't have the time for it mm -hmm. this time around. But, um, uh, Old Man Stompy, would you be okay with uh, reading a couple of these fan comments? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, okay. okay, so these are fan comments from Living Corpus' original question on strange game mechanics. Uh, I wasn't on that original episode, so I don't remember what you guys said personally. Or, Neither or, do I. Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> so we're all we're all working on the same level here. So first comment is oh this one is from Living Corpse uh, on Godzilla Two War of the Monsters for the NES, which is a strategy turn based game where you play the military <laughs> and fight the monsters. It sounds good until you realize there's a weird slot machine mechanic that determines if your attacks hit or not. And I still don't get how this thing works. It reminds me of um Crisis Core. If you played yeah. Final Fantasy oh, yeah. PSP, yeah. where you like, or like it decided, or like like a slot machine would just start spinning randomly in the middle of battle, and it would decide if you like leveled up or like won the battle or like summoned Bahamut. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes random mechanics in in uh, in video games unless it's like explicitly like a gambling game or something. It's just like the worst. Yeah. All right. Next we have from Gamera. We have. I don't even know how to pronounce this. <laughs> Gauss' destruction strategy for the Super Famicom is similar. Oh no, no, this is from Living Corpse, but it's ga it's a gamma. Oh, that's the name of the okay. Yes. Uh, it's an oh, so <laughs> Sorry this is, about this that. is all from Living Corpse. Okay, I, yes. I thought we had a lot of comments, but actually we have a really big comment from one person, and then another yeah. one from another person. 
<laughs> unless there's a game, unless there's a game called Insane Buffoon, which is I don't know, nothing <laughs> I would, would surprise that. me. There's a game called Irritating Stick. So <laughs> <laughs> there are two games called Irritating Stick. <laughs> Irritating. There's one for the Neo Geo, uh, based off of the same uh, 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 game show. It's oh, a, nice. It was a game show. <laughs> yeah, it's it's also an annoying carnival game. Um, yep. Anyway, for the, uh, Gamera Gauss destruction strategy for the Super Famicom is similar. It's an RTS where you have to use the military to lure the monsters into traps or into fighting each other because you can't hurt them. I understand it from a story point, since in the films the military can't hurt them much, but damn, it's literally lure or turn a monster around with assaults to piss them off more than anything, so it's a game that you win by manipulation rather than killing. But hey, at least there's no stupid slot machine. <laughs> I, I guess they forgot to re to recognize that it would be much more fun to be the monster in this game. Yeah, really, like... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Like, nobody wants to be the good guy uh, or be the military in those movies. The military gets trounced, and they always they always get saved by another monster. <laughs> well, so th there's also, like, the you know the Transformers remake style where they put the emphasis more and more on the humans because people identify with them. But, like, mm -hmm. people who play a lot of, like, kids who play a lot of video games don't necessarily want to play video games to be the humans, right? Nope. Like, people want to empathize with the main character in a movie because they have no agency otherwise. But in video games, you have a lot more agency. I think that's more Im Im important in a book. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, in, a, in a movie, I can definitely just see some big robots smacking each other around. I don't care. Right. <laughs> but, but, but in a book, yeah, I get that. But come on, you don't I need mean, to tell a story. There, there's like, there, what's it, Grendel, the, 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 the version of Beowulf from the, from the standpoint of the monster? Like, there are some good novels that have also been written from the non-human standpoint. Uh, well, there, there's also, um, you know... Uh, Beast Wars, which is one of my favorite Transformers things ever, and it doesn't have any humans in it until the very end, and they're just proto-humans for story purposes. Nice. So, so, so it, it's like, it, they don't need to be there. <laughs> is my point. Okay. They so, have their own drama. So, so Pyro, we'll give you, you know, this this window since we just talked about Transformers for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, nothing. All right. So, no, nothing. Uh, all right. <laughs> Moving on. So. Uh, uh, still, still the same comment. Gamera 2000 for the PlayStation. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing a theme. These are all, these are, these are all Godzilla it's a games. Kaiju, kaiju games. Yeah. <laughs> for the for the PlayStation, a fun game but disappointing. Since people want to play as Gamera, and instead you play a Star Fox style game where you are a fighter jet and Gamera is reduced to an assist character you summon. See, wow. like they, they they just keep missing the point, right? But, He's a friend to all children, though. I, I've I've noticed that this is a common theme in all of these games. You don't actually play as the monster. They got really close, I guess, if you could summon Gamera in this one. Yeah. Um, okay. Gamera, guarding the guardian of the universe for the Game Boy. You'd think it would be a fighting game or an adventure beat em up, but instead it's more like Pokemon. <laughs> Turn based with cinematics. Example: You tell Gamera to back off, and a cinematic shows him backing up. Okay, so we're like we're like asymptotically approaching actually controlling the monster, like as we go through this comment. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> I, I, I I like that this tells a story as they like got closer and closer to actually just like giving you the, the kaiju style game that you actually wanted um, but there's no conclusion big, big middle finger <laughs> <laughs> alright so one more comment from Insane Buffoon uh, in response to the last week's question of baffling game mechanics some examples I've come up with uh, weapon sway in shooters is pretty baffling especially in games like The Evil Within where ammo is scarce and also mandatory stealth in games that don't normally have stealth mechanics, and then climbing in Breath of the Wild, which I completely understand, particularly when it starts raining and you slide off of every surface. Oh, yeah. Like, especially yeah. when you're on the side of a mountain and there's nowhere you can go except <laughs> just, like, slide down very slowly. I'm, I'm currently yep. playing Breath of the Wild, and I feel that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. no, I get it. But it's like, um, like I think that the thing is, with a lot of games and a lot of, with a lot of the mechanics that was mentioned, that Insane Buffoon mentioned, um... It's one of those things where a lot of developers kind of want to put like realistic elements in games, but at the same time, I, I don't want to be in real life when I'm playing a video game. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was always my complaint with uh, like Rainbow Six when that originally came out, because like you could get shot once in that game, and like it's a first-person shooter where you get shot once, you, you die, just like in real life. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> it, it, nobody wants that. Like, like you get get shot out constantly in these games. Like I don't know. <laughs> the, the what I what I the way I had always been taught to visualize it was that in video games where you have a health meter and you're being shot at like with with like some kind of attack that would like kill a normal human, is that like you're expending your you're not really expending your health you're expending your like stamina to avoid Armor. having taken a fatal wound right you know right? oh okay gotcha yeah that I makes think sense. from playing and or just reading the the manuals for D and D. 
like that's kind of how they see it too it's not necessarily your health points it's your will to keep going i guess you could mm. say so when you go down to zero at hp it's not necessarily that you're dead it's just that you can't you can't do any like you're done like you can't do anything <laughs> anymore Right. Yeah, yeah. And if I'm and not mistaken, uh, like, you can keep getting hit until you're, like, actually dead. Like, really dead. <laughs> right. But usually it's not, yeah. like, some negative hit point value. I think if... It, so, in D&D, at least, it's if you're at negative your hit points, I, you're dead dead. Mm-hmm. Um, it it's, also, like, chopped up into hamburger meat, essentially, If you right? ever take damage <laughs> that's... If you ever take damage in one hit that's equal to half your HP, you're immediately knocked out. Because, like, you, you got... Basically, you suffered from shock. Say. Okay, I I think that that makes sense because like if you get blindsided, like like bashed in the face all of a sudden, like yeah, yeah. and like half your health is gone, you would probably want to die too. So the, <laughs> there, there's also like what I've heard. I, I I'm sure I'm sure Pyro's heard this before. Like I've heard it referred to as like the chunky salsa rule, which is like if you if you take like any any like like hit that like at least mechanics wise wouldn't do a lot of damage but would like reduce your head to like the consistency of salsa then you're probably dead (laughs) and like and like a good dm a good dm probably wouldn't put you in that scenario but like you can never underestimate what your players will like stick their heads into so yeah yeah (laughs) sure 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 exactly uh Um, i'll I'll field this one of from general ledger because it has to do with uh, the game that i mentioned here sure um so I had mentioned uh, in a previous uh, episode that Reseteer had a stupid mechanic where uh, uh, you have to um, you have to get your adventurer to buy the right equipment randomly in order for you to play the the action portion of the game, which I thought was very stupid. So he he said it in response to this: the small upside to the equipment aspect of Reseteer is that you can lend your uh, your mercenary equipment for the dungeon. But it counted against your loot slots and could be lost if you were KO'd. So that sucks. Uh, I agree it was comically frustrating when they would come into the shop, uh, 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 see a plus five dragon slaying sword prominently displayed in the window, and then just buy a cheap honey bun uh, from the vending machine. Yeah, shit like that would literally happen, and you'd be like, you you'd be like punching the ground while it, while it was <laughs> happening. That, that's why it's not a good game mechanic, I'm sorry. Um, a game um, mechanic I don't like is that puzzle uh, bosses that lose all challenge once you solve the puzzle. Uh, so uh, mm. in Z- the Zelda games are prone to this. Other than the annoying um, mechanic is mandatory luck-based missions. If I remember correctly, in Sakodin you need uh, to win a dice game three times in advance to to advance to the next area. Oh man, that's just like the Alex Kidd games. You have to I, win I a, a, a rock that, paper scissors. I remember that dice to... game, and it actually is really annoying. And I think when I was playing it on PS on my Vita, like the PS1 version, I right, guess only on PS1, but the the release of that on Vita was because I don't think you could save scum. But there was actually a certain place in the bowl. Like, you had to throw dice, and you had to say where in the bowl you're throwing the dice at. And there's, like, a certain area you can throw it at that you always win, but it's just really annoying <laughs> to deal with. So <laughs> why, why does that even exist to begin it's, with? It's, it's also that, like, that like it's a for one, it's an arcane, like, Japanese dice game that no mm-hmm. one in America knows how to play. So it's not like you, you, you understand the strategy from first principles. But also, if I'm not mistaken... If you throw the dice in the wrong place, they just go like flying out of the bowl, and you yep. lose immediately. Yep. It's like, why is that even possible? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Why is this even in the game? I mm-hmm. maybe it's thematically, but it, it should just have a play like a, a cinematic where you just win, if that's the case. <laughs> but that's stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so uh, he says, I save scum to get a to get a lot uh, a lot to get the RNG to uh, deem me to continue. One that I like but usually uh, doesn't work out is removing the HUD. Uh, so they did this with uh, Far Cry Primal. Um, it makes the game more cinematic and immersive, but then I uh, easily forget uh, my health and supply count. So yeah, a HUD is like um, is a a cool thing and a cool convenience. But uh, I think there are some modern games that do some some cool stuff. So, I, it, it was... If it doesn't have, a, I'm sorry. No, you you go. Oh, I was going to say, if they don't have a HUD, they should allow you to to view yourself in some way, because that's what you could do in real life. You can look down at your hands and your body and, and also mm-hmm. feel things. That's what a HUD is is replacing, you know? A HUD is replacing the fact that you cannot feel your character's pain, um, 
you know, I, I and and I guess the maps. Yeah. So, but uh, um, like a, a good compromise would be like the Dead Space games, where like your ammo is always displayed on your gun, and your health is always like on your arm or like your, mm. your back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was since I, again come playing Breath of the Wild. It was funny. There's one option in the settings called like for HUD called Pro Mode, and I'm like, oh, what is this? And basically, <laughs> Pro Mode is you can only see your health. Like, and I guess your stamina when you climb. I didn't try playing for that long. It basically removes the map, and my my wife was watching, and I'm like, hey, look, pro mode is, like, there's no there's no map. And she's like, why would you ever want to do that? How is that pro? And it's like, I guess because you have to know where you're going, and it's like, but it's still dumb. Like, yeah, I, I'm in a world that's as big as Breath of the Wild, I need a map or I'm going to get lost. This is like that's the important part of yeah. the HUD, you know, and you don't have the map on all the time, right? The the, the part that would be pro is if or that would make you a survivalist is if you didn't know your health, right? right. That's the, actually the it, it's like backwards. Here, here here's Access the part very good that, point. <laughs> that games like this are forgetting. Uh, in real life, you can ask people for directions if you don't have a map. Uh, you there are also like signs on the roads hmm. you know so so the, there are things that indicate where you need to go in real life like you the the um, well, american in interstate the system but i know what you mean but 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 here here's the thing you know like if you're in a populated area yeah sure but like uh, i i just don't they they forget that there are actual conveniences to real life that take care of these things. Well, I agree with what old man Stompy <laughs> said in the fact that like if I was a professional I wouldn't necessarily know how many hearts I'd more know again like by looking at how Link uh, is like slouched over if he's almost <laughs> dead but I would have a compass like there's no compass in pro mode like I should know yeah, which exactly. way north. That's what mm. that's what I was getting at. There are there are things in modern life that that help you out with these things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like compasses is another thing. Like in talking to people. It, it, so, like it's not like in in one of these games you can't ask for directions. <laughs> like, <laughs> so clearly the lesson to be learned here is that life is like a video game, and when you die, you can just respawn and start again. That well, uh, there are belief systems you, that include. That. Are, are so, you willing well, to find out for us? Well, well, <laughs> you know, you know, if if I can, I'll come back and and let you know. We'll prove this with the scientific method, old man Stompy. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, we should I'll, move I'll, on to our question. Usually this is the kind of like low-level research you ask a graduate student to do for you. <laughs> <laughs> Here, hold on to this uh, cement brick uh, and go into the ocean. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <For science. laughs> see what happens. Um, so uh, th- this is uh, this is from Jake Ologist, our, our current question. And uh, it's it definitely sounds like Kim talking. Have you lads thought about uh, energy-based propulsion for... Uh, astronautical vehicles. Uh, so this is a, a real-world uh, question here. The invention of such a device would really help out a lot in space travel. Uh, hmm. I haven't thought about it at all until right now. Uh, so, like, I, I, I know that I was specifically asked to be part of this discussion. Uh, for, for like, for one, I'm not a rocket scientist. <laughs> I was a particle. I was a particle physicist. So you know, my <laughs> like my my answer is going to be like a little bit sideways. Um, so, like, you know, it would be interesting, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it solves, like, a lot of the big problems with fast and light travel. So, like, the big first one is that, as far as we know, like, we have, we have, we have no understanding of physics that allows us to move faster than the speed of light. That's the first really big, like, hurdle to, like, mm-hmm. interstellar travel, is that the closest star that we can reach, you know, at, at a minimum, you know, it's, it's four light years away. So, like, a reasonable journey, just based on current technology, would take hundreds of years. You know, if not if not decades, using you know, assuming like we really stretch the limit of current human ingenuity, um, and like that's a hard limit as far as we know, based on the like uh, y- y- to the the conclusion, like the, the according to the physics that we understand. Yeah, the the um, conclusion of the theory of relativity is that to move at um, the speed of light would require you to have infinite mass, basically, to produce that much energy. Um, so obviously, that's impossible. Uh, and like you would asymptotically approach it as you get closer and closer to the speed of light, um, so like that's a pretty hard requirement. Um, so the other idea is that like uh, you know like I, the... I like that you prefaced uh, as we understand it uh, because yeah, sure. there there are some physicists out there that will just say that, state it as law, but mm-hmm. um, I, I I I just have a feeling you know it it, it, it may it may be completely wrong that we just don't understand. 
um, how to move faster than light. So, I, I was recently reading uh, a book called uh, The Three Body Problem by a, a Chinese a Chinese author, uh, Qishan Liu, I think is how you pronounce his name, um, and it's it's not a like it's, it's it's it deals a little bit about this, but not, like not in a very optimistic way. Um, and the, so the idea is there's a there's a there's um something in in science known as the Fermi paradox, which you guys have probably heard before in some form, which is like if if it's possible to travel faster than speed of light, the speed of light, why haven't we seen evidence of alien civilizations? You know, like why haven't we at least observed you know something in you know the we we can we can we can view you know a pretty expansive portion of the night sky. Like the of you know the galaxy and the universe through the telescopes we have available to us until practically as far as it's possible for us to see um, with the human eye, given like the laws of quantum physics. Like that's how that's how that's how far out we can see. You know, we can see the cosmic background can, radiation. Can I can I yeah. quickly say that doesn't that ignore the fact that we've only had um, like the ability to publicize this kind of thing on on a wide scale? And also, like, the technology to observe this kind of st stuff for a relatively short amount of time in terms of, um, in terms of, like, you know, global and uh, universal proportions. Um, well, like, we, 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 we haven't had telescopes for all that long, r r really, I mean, all, in all reality. So there, there could have been, well, um, like, a, a very famous uh, or, or e even, like, a, a you know, a, a, a clearly seen... Evidence of of alien life, and we just didn't know how to tell each other about it, or didn't didn't see it quite all the way, or whatever, and and couldn't tell people about it or publicize so, about it. Uh, I mean, that's certainly possible. So, like, you know, there there you've always heard rumors that like, oh, the pyramids or the Easter Island heads were built by aliens, right? Like, I I don't like a lot aliens. of these <laughs> aliens, ancient aliens. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of these things tend to be like like. Like racially tinged, they tend to oh, represent yeah. more that like Western scientists don't believe that like savages on islands, you know, could build these like immense structures and that they are in, in, ingenious enough. Yeah, even yeah. though like a lot of what we think of as science actually came from like North Africa and the Middle East. Like a lot of what like we built into Western science like came from that area originally. And um, um, Egyptian was very uh, similar to binary, mm -hmm. like uh, the, the their way of counting. Well, oh, it, it, just, it, 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 it just it just wasn't uh, it wasn't decimal. It wasn't based on like the fingers and toes, like mm -hmm. like uh, Western counting. Um, but anyway, um, so what I'm trying to say is that like if if there was an alien race capable of moving faster than the speed of light, you know, either likely we'd see like organized structures like on the galactic scale somewhere out in the universe. Like they'd probably be large enough that we could see it. Um, since we can see like down to the level of individual planets on extra solar systems at this point, um, or that it's so, or that life is so alien that we can't really comprehend the fact that we're even looking at it, mm. um, and or so, that it's so old. Uh, what we're looking at is so old that it it might already be happening, but we we don't know. Yeah, that's that, no that, 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 that's that's also true. Like you know, a galaxy that's a billion light years away is a billion years old by the time that we can observe it. <laughs> You know. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 looking at um like yesterday shit. Like mm -hmm. uh, this isn't uh that that <laughs> that's what I don't get about you know. Uh, right. I I I guess I'm an apologist for for thinking that like we're we shouldn't be that unusual. Like y y you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I I don't think we are. Um maybe maybe um in you know we're uncommon. You know, but I I don't think we're unusual. Uh right. like like unique. Yeah, you know so what I mean? it'd be pretty strange to think that there's absolutely nowhere on the universe that's capable of supporting, you know, uh, some some form of intelligent life or like life period. Um, but us finding it and reaching it, like to me, is is like well beyond sure. any of our current understanding. Um, so, like specific to get back to the, the to the question specifically, like energy based propulsion. I, I guess I'd be a little bit curious as to exactly what Dracologist was thinking when he when he said energy based propulsion. Yeah, like the, you know, the, <laughs> like everything's the, energy, right? Yeah, uh, the, the, the engineering challenge is that like like is just like basic Newton's laws that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So like in principle, you could detonate a nuclear bomb and use that for propulsion, but it would probably blow up your rocket. So the technolo technological challenge in that case is like <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> is, is like is like creating enough thrust without tearing your rocket apart um more that's so what she so said. like <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like I, i'm sure that joke was made in shadows of the dam 
at some point. <laughs> it sounds exactly like a line that the that that Fleming no, or whatever his name they're... would say. They're even less subtler, <laughs> subtle than that. Uh, I'm gonna fire off my boner. Yes, yep. yes, my yeah. my hot boner. I remember that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So so this is devolved. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <coughs> I, I there are some there are some like uh, some theoretical engines right now that like posit that we can propel at least an unmanned drone. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, like raw acceleration is the other issue that like a human being can't accelerate much faster than we do right now, mm-hmm. and that's a that's a pretty hard limit also to the maximum speed that we can reach. Um, so, so in, in this book that I was talking about, someone did the math, and that like for a, you know, a roughly human shaped person, it, you know, if you for example if they were coming from like Alpha Centauri, which is four light years away, at a tenth of the speed of light, you'd think the trip would take forty years, you know, because you're moving at a tenth of the speed of light and they're four light years away, um, but actually like probably it would take closer to 400 years because it would take just that long to accelerate up to a tenth of the speed of light without, like, killing everybody on board the ship. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you, we could accelerate up to that point because, um, you know, we're already moving very, very fast, right? We're, right, we're but, moving as fast as the Earth is moving. But, um, but not close to, to yeah, but not close to, you know, this, this, like, it's, it's yeah, it's the acceleration. We're not moving close to the speed of light, that's for sure. We're moving whatever the rotation of the Earth is plus whatever speed the Earth is going around the sun, and, like, whatever speed the universe is expanding. But, like, our speed isn't changing. And Correct. we're not hitting anything yet. <laughs> um, so, um, there's another book series that I really like the called um, Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Um, and, like, there's this, there's this, like, really brutal type of technology. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Dracologist knows some... Can provide some equivalently brutal examples from the Warhammer universe because that's kind of the idiom that that like series is based off of but um the the church in that universe has mastered the Catholic church still exists and it's mastered the practice of like human resurrection so <laughs> what what they do is they they their ships just move faster than everybody else's ships because they don't care if the pilot survives the trip so oh, they just geez. accelerate to like to like hyper light speed in an instant and like the the pilot is crushed to paste and they're just like continuously resurrected every time they arrive at their wow. destination <laughs> that sounds like some kind of fresh hell. Jeez. Yeah, I, I I would imagine. And so like then so like the pilots are always like supremely disoriented over the first couple of days after they land, but they have that time because they get there so much faster than everybody else. Um and I don't know, I thought I thought it was interesting. Like once you get over your initial disgust, you know, it's 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 an interesting theoretical concept. <laughs> Wow, wow. <laughs> so that sounds like, very yeah. uh, Warhammer ish, like to it me, does. because like, <laughs> like, 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 kill yourself to get there, but don't worry, we'll bring you back. But <laughs> you endured all this pain. Shut up, you. It's like, are, are there are there any implications to continually resurrecting your pilots? Don't worry about it. That's our problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds very uh, like the Prestige. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, jeez. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, um, that that's that's very interesting. Uh, does anybody else have any? Um, uh, any comments on that? No, I mean, I think my only input is that I think it's when I watch Gundam, I think it's cool they they can fly in <laughs> space with giant <laughs> robots, and I hope that we can eventually do that. But I know nothing. I don't know enough about this topic to like be part of a discussion about it. <laughs> See, I, I, no, continue. I was I was talking to my girlfriend about this. Um, like. I would never want to go into space. Fuck that. Space, like, our bodies are not made for that, so everything wants us to die. So, like, I would never want to go into space. It's terrifying. <laughs> like, so the, the, I, yeah, I imagine the... Old Man Stompy is very similar because he, he didn't even want to drive for, for so long. Like, <laughs> can you imagine, well, like, oh, I'm going to go up into space where all I have is this little, like, tether to keep me to anything that can keep me alive. <laughs> so like now it's now it's kind of the opposite. That now that I've been driving a lot, I always want to be the one driving the car. And like depending upon who's driving the car, I get scared really quickly when I'm not driving the car. Oh, so, like, you, you have like mother syndrome, like you know, like like uh, some some people's like parents when they're when they're teaching their child how to drive. Right. Like, like, un- like unless unless I can fall asleep in the car, then but oh, okay. but since I'm anxious, that's already hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> You just need to be drugged. <laughs> like... I mean, that, that's that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but the, so, like, the the, the the takeaway at the end of the day is just that, like, that, like, what we've managed to achieve as scientists is usually really cool if you think about it. But like, the challenges that we have to solve to move to like the next level of technology are often like really mundane and unfortunately less interesting than just like, hey, shoot a big laser out of the back of your, you know, your your rocket ship and hope for the best. Like, think about that. Yeah. Like a, a rocket, a, a laser that can shoot a rocket like into the stars. 
Like, imagine that coming out of a rocket while it's, like, at Cape Canaveral. Like, you might come out of the other side of the planet. Yeah. You know? I I can't wait until we can, like, launch spaceships from, from space. Because, like, one of, one of the major setbacks of space travel is that the, it's so hard to get off of Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so like, a, a lot of sci-fi series, you know, basically posit that you don't, you don't really take off from Earth and, or, or the planets anymore. You, you build a you space get... elevator. Exactly. You, well, you so, build a space uh, like, elevator. a space elevator is still in the Earth's orbit, and it still, like, travels at the, the velocity of the Earth, mm-hmm. right? So, you, you, what you'd have to do is put it maybe at, like, one of the Lagrange points, which is... Uh, there's like this like seven known points in the Earth Moon system where like the gravitational pull of the Earth and the Moon is the sa- is equivalent. So like something there with like some basic booster rockets would be pretty stable and it wouldn't orbit with the planet. So you'd have to escape the system velocity and not necessarily like the Earth's gravity. I don't know if that would make things easier. Um, like I haven't really thought about the math behind it yet. Um, but you'd have to put it like well outside the Earth's gravity well. For it to actually like for it to really save you time, and then you'd have to assemble the whole ship, you know, like you know, like in the old in the Star Trek movies where they show the the Enterprise being assembled, it's always like in a star base at a star mm-hmm. dock, not not like sure. on a planet. Yeah, yeah, because they, it would be very hard for it to take off from the mm-hmm. Earth because of how big it is. Sure. Oh, I mean, for for from the standpoint of the of the Enterprise, they've like they've gone well beyond faster than light travel. You know, they've they've yeah. explored the galaxy. So sure. probably they could lift off from the Earth. They've got like impulse engines that move pretty fast, um, but still they recognize that the easiest thing to do is to start from space. Sure, sure, makes sense. Um, also, think about the amount of air that it would need to displace. Like, think about like 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 how how big the Enterprise is. Mm-hmm. Enterprise is gigantic, right? Like it's um, it's easily the size of a city, right? It, 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 yeah, I mean, it's got to support, like, I don't know about a city size, but definitely, like, several skyscrapers. It's got to support, you know, like, thousands of crew members. Well, I'm not um, thinking, like, Manhattan. I'm, I'm sure. thinking, like, a, you know, like, a, an, you know, the smallest city you can think of, you know? Yeah, okay, so, well, if a very small, a, a town, a, at least. That's that's what <laughs> a, I mean, like, a, a, a graduated a quaint, town. A quaint Vermont village in space. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we're we're getting into the weeds now. All right, <laughs> well that is the show for this week. Um, we want to thank our fans who contributed questions. Please keep us supplied with topics by submitting questions of your own via the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. I like uh, this w- real world application kind of mm-hmm. stuff too. Uh, that was that was good. Uh, gave us a little bit of it, change. It, it doesn't always have guard. to be video game stuff. Yeah, uh, that is true. I was a little out of my element, but you know, thankfully we have. Somebody who knows something. Here. Yeah. Well, I mean, mostly I made references to books that I read, not necessarily that I had any actual like physics input to the topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. But uh, at, le- at least you have some experience otherwise. Um, so um, uh, while there, please give us thumbs ups, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. Um, it helps us promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Tuesdays on our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness. The in-depth look at this week in our lives finally you can friend me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live Twitter, uh, Battle.net and Switch and you can find me as Pyrojack Frost or Cloud08540 on pretty much those same things other than Twitch um, and you can find me as Old Man Stompy on most major gaming and social media networks except for Steam and Switch uh, technically I have a Switch but it's not online um that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll catch everybody on Tuesday with uh, hopefully a discussion of AGDQ. All right. Peace out, everyone. Cheers.